Well, since the SAT is literally four weeks from today, what I wanted to do was choose a new topic every day and cover a few questions on that topic so that you'd have like comprehensive prep, right? And this is a great one because this is one of those areas where like we think it's so easy, but I can almost guarantee you like you may not remember what the smallest prime number is. And I figure this way also you can learn a few questions at once. So let's take a look at this first one, right? Which of the following represents an integer? Well, this may be straightforward, but you should know, particularly for ACT and for SAT, that an integer is just a whole number. It can be positive, it can be negative, it just can't be a fraction or decimal. So if you look at these answer choices, the only one that is an integer is answer choice A. But now, if you take a look at this one, it's a little bit more tricky. What's the sum of the first three prime numbers? So most people think that the first prime number is one, and it is not one, okay? In fact, we'll erase that, all right? The smallest prime number is actually two. And remember, prime numbers are just numbers that essentially have no factors. They're just divisible by one and themselves. So the next two prime numbers you'd have are what? Three and then five. And when you add those together, two plus three plus five, you get 10. Okay. Now let's take a look at this last one of our set. And this is, this one's a little bit tougher. Okay. So it says for integer values of X, 1.25 X is an integer. Okay. So 1.25 X is an integer, which of the following must be an integer. So here's the deal. We know that this has to be an integer, a whole number. So the easiest thing we can do here is we can choose a number for X, right? that makes this an integer and always choose as small a number as possible for questions like this and i'm going to explain why in a second so let's say x is four if we have x is four we have 1.25 times four which is five that's an integer right so now we're going to take the same four here and plug it through each of these answer choices and remember we want to see which one comes out to be an integer well answer choice a is four over eight, which would be one half, okay? That's not an integer. But what if you had chosen a gigantic number for x? Then all of these would be integers and you just have to keep choosing new numbers. That's why using a small number works really well. And you always have to test all the answer choices in case more than one works. Because if more than one works, then you gotta try another number, okay? So four over six would be two thirds. So that doesn't work. Four over four, that's one. That does work, but remember we wanna try all of them. 4 over 3 does not work because that would be 1 and 1 third. So that's it. It's got to be answer choice C. Now, if you like this, I would like to do them every day. So like and comment to let me know. And I'd like to do one on triangles and then another one on slope and another one on the quadratic and, you know, all the different topics. So if you're happy about this, let me know because that's how I'll know to keep creating more.